Hello everyone. Today I'm sharing something deeply personal and unbelievably shocking. Imagine this. You're eagerly waiting for your child's birth. The one moment that's supposed to be filled with joy and love. But instead, you're hit with a revelation that turns your world upside down. My white wife gave birth to a beautiful black baby. And here's the twist. I'm white. As you can imagine, a thousand questions and emotions flooded my mind. This isn't just a story about betrayal or heartbreak. It's about revealing the truth and the shocking journey that followed. In this video, I'll walk you through every moment of this mind-blowing experience, from the initial shock, to the heart-wrenching conversations, to the startling DNA revelations. Trust me, this is a roller coaster ride you won't want to miss. Stay tuned. The truth is more twisted than you can imagine. I first met Daniel at a neighborhood BBQ. Alice dragged me along, insisting that we should socialize more. Typical Alice, always trying to bring me out of my shell. I was initially skeptical. Making small talk with strangers isn't my strong suit. But then I saw Daniel operating the grill and something about him piqued my interest. Hey there, he said, waving a pair of tongs. You must be Donald. Alice has told me all about you. I nodded and shook his hand. All good things, I hope. Daniel laughed in a warm, genuine tone. Oh, only the best. She's quite proud of her soldier husband. We started talking, and I was surprised to discover we had much in common. Daniel was an ex-military member who had left the service years ago. He understood life in a way that most civilians didn't. You know, he said, offering me a beer. We should do this more often. My backyard's always open if you want to throw some steaks on the grill. I found myself agreeing, and our weekend barbecues quickly became a tradition. Alice was overjoyed, of course. She'd always worried that I didn't have many friends outside of the military. It's good for you, she'd tell me, kissing my cheek. And I feel better knowing you have someone to talk to in your free time. As the weeks passed, I found myself gradually opening up to Daniel. We'd sit in his backyard, drinking beers and sharing war stories. It was lovely and comfortable. I didn't realize how much I needed a friend like him. Then came the day I had dreaded. Another deployment. As I packed my belongings, I couldn't help but feel relieved that Daniel would be present to keep an eye on Alice. Don't worry about anything, he said, clapping me on the shoulder. I'll make sure Alice is taken care of while you're gone. The morning of my departure was rough. Alice clung to me, her eyes full of tears. Promise me you'll come back, she said quietly. I hugged her tight and breathed in her familiar scent. I promise. I'll always come back to you, Alice. As I carried my bag, I caught Daniel's attention. He nodded, indicating a silent understanding between us. I knew he'd be there for Alice, which comforted me as I embarked on another uncertain mission. After months of being buried under layers of camouflage and radio chatter, my secretary handed me the satellite phone. Donald. It's Alice. She's pregnant. The words exploded in my head like fireworks, instantly removing the grime and exhaustion of deployment. Pregnant? My voice was barely audible as if I couldn't believe it. But the wide grin on my face and the genuine tears that welled up confirmed the truth. I could almost see her gentle smile as she announced the news, her hand resting protectively on her belly. After the call ended, I did not waste any time. I applied for leave, my thoughts racing about Alice and our future child. Fatherhood, a future in which I wouldn't miss any birthdays or milestones, a life centered on something significant. When I returned home, the first thing I did was take Alice into my arms. Her face was glowing with an indescribable pregnancy aura. We easily reestablished our rhythm, and our romance rekindled like a never-ending flame. Weekends were filled with dates, Dinners at our favorite restaurants, cozy movie nights and long drives where we discussed things that didn't matter, but did. On Saturday, we wandered through baby stores, our hands tangled under racks of tiny clothes. Alice laughed, her eyes sparkling, as I showed her a onesie with blue elephants. 
With each smile we exchanged, my heart swelled like a tiny piece of the future now tucked into our present. Let's pick a name, she suggested one evening as we painted the nursery. The white wall was covered in light brush strokes of a soft pastel shade. How do you think of Ethan as a boy? Ethan sounds like a warrior, I remarked, dipping my brush back into the paint can. And if it's a girl? How about Elena? Her gaze softened. Elena's beautiful. Days blurred together, filled with baby shopping, doctor appointments, and quiet, tender moments. Despite our happiness, I began to notice traces of unease in Alice. Her smile occasionally faltered, not quite reaching her eyes. During our conversations, she would zone out, lost in her thoughts. It's just the stress of the pregnancy, I told myself. Hormones and all that. Nonetheless, her distraction gnawed at the edge of my consciousness. One night, we went to see a movie. I am trying to remember which film it was. We sat in the dimly lit theater, the screen's light flickering across our faces. Alice appeared distant, her hand cold in mine. She kept fidgeting, her gaze rarely resting on the screen. Halfway through the film, I looked over at her. Everything okay? Yes, she said softly, but her voice lacked conviction. Just tired. I squeezed her hand, hoping to provide silent comfort. We can leave if you want. She shook her head and forced a smile. No, let's stay. It's fine. But it wasn't okay. The nagging feeling of doubt persisted in my thoughts. I tried to ignore it, focusing on the movie. But Alice's distraction was palpable. I leaned in closer and whispered reassurances into her ear, hoping to alleviate whatever bothered her. Despite my efforts, the unease persisted. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was deeply wrong. But for now, I tried to focus on our future, the baby, and the life we were creating together. On my birthday, I paced down the hospital corridor, my palms sweating and my heart racing. Alice's screams echoed throughout the halls, making me cringe. I'd dealt with enemy fire without breaking a sweat, but this was entirely different. You're doing great, honey, I said, trying to hide the tremor in my voice. Hours passed, and I felt like an eternity. Finally, the screaming stopped, leaving an eerie silence. My breath caught in my throat as the doctor appeared with a grim face. Mr. Thompson, could you come with me, please? As I followed him, my legs felt like lead and my mind raced with possibilities. Was Alice fine? Was it the baby? We entered a small room, and there it was. My child, flesh and blood. However, something needed to be fixed. The baby's skin was much darker than it should have been, even darker than mine or Alice's. My world was shattered in that instant. The room spun, and I gripped the crib's edge to keep myself steady. This can't be right. I choked out, barely audible. The doctor placed his hand on my shoulder, his voice filled with sympathy. Mr. Thompson, I understand this must be a shock. But I wasn't paying attention. My mind was reeling, trying to piece together all the slight unease moments when Alice appeared distant or guilty. Everything makes sense now. Rage welled up within me, threatening to consume everything in its path. Without saying anything, I turned around and stormed out of the room, ignoring the doctor's calls from behind me. I couldn't look at Alice, I couldn't bear seeing her lying there knowing what she'd done. The betrayal left a deep wound that I knew would never fully heal. My feet carried me out of the hospital and into the cool night air. I gulped it down, attempting to clear my mind, but all I could see was that baby, the living, breathing evidence of my wife's infidelity. I stormed into our house my mind filled with rage and disbelief. The silence that greeted me only increased my rage. I dashed for Daniel's house, my fists so tightly clenched that my knuckles turned white. Daniel, I exclaimed, pounding on his door. No response. The bastard was most likely still in the hospital, acting as a devoted father to my wife's child. My child? No, it's not my child. The thought made me ill. I kicked the door in frustration and returned to my house.
the one we'd built together, full of memories that now felt tainted and false. I paced the living room, my thoughts racing. How long was this going on? How often did they laugh at me behind my back? The deployment, the barbecues, and the friendly chats had all taken on a sinister tone. I yelled and swept everything from the mantelpiece. The glass shattered and photos of Alice and me fell to the floor. Okay, let it all break. I needed a plan. I could not let them get away with it. My military training kicked in, and I began thinking strategically. First and foremost, I needed to end this farce of a marriage. I took out my phone and called my lawyer. Jack, this is Donald. I need divorce papers drawn up ASAP. It isn't good. I'll explain later. Get it done. While I waited for Jack to call back, I gathered every photo and memento of Alice and placed them in a box. I could not bear to look at her face right now. Hours I was passed in a blur of rage and planning. When Jack finally called back, I had a cold sense of satisfaction. The papers are ready. Good, I'll be there in twenty. I drove to Jack's office, my hands gripping the steering wheel so tightly that I thought it would snap. After picking up the papers, I went straight to the hospital. When I arrived, the maternity ward was quiet. I found Alice's room reasonably quickly. She was there holding the child. Her eyes brightened when she saw me but quickly dimmed as she studied my expression. Donald, I... I interrupted her, tossing the divorce papers on her bed. Save it, Alice, we're done. Her face wrinkled. Please, Donald, let me explain. I made a mistake, but I love you. We can work this out. I laughed with a harsh, bitter tone. Work it out? You screwed our neighbor and had his kid. There's nothing to work out. Tears streamed down her face. I'm so sorry. I was lonely. And Daniel was there. Please, Donald, don't throw away our marriage. I felt only cold contempt. Our marriage? You threw that away the moment you spread your legs for Daniel. Sign the papers, Alice, it's over. I turned and walked away, ignoring her tears and pleas. My next stop was clear. I had unfinished business with Daniel. I found him at home, packing a bag. You're an intelligent man. When I entered, he looked up, fear on his face. Donald, I... My fist hit his jaw before he could finish. He stumbled back, but I didn't allow him to recover. Years of combat experience took over as I unleashed my rage on him. I'm unsure how long it lasted, but Daniel was a bloody mess on the floor when I stepped back. He groaned, attempting to push himself up. Stay down, I ordered. Stay away from Alice and that kid. You've taken enough from me. When I left Daniel's house, I felt empty. The rage driving me had vanished, replaced by a cold, hollow sensation. But I was determined. This chapter of my life was over, and I'd be damned if I gave Alice or Daniel any more control over me. I stumbled into our house, still reeling from the chaos at the hospital. Our living room, which had once been a sanctuary of peace and love, now felt like a mockery. Family photos hung on the walls, smiling faces frozen in time, oblivious to the betrayal that had ripped our lives apart. Donald, please. Alice's voice cracked behind me. We need to talk. I ignored her and marched to our bedroom, yanking open the closet door. I grabbed my duffel bag and began shoving clothes into it haphazardly. Donald, I'm so sorry. Please, let me explain. Alice pleaded, hovering in the doorway. I whirled around, giving her a cold stare. Explain what, Alice? How did you screw our neighbor and have his kid? How have you lied to my face for months? She flinched at my words, tears streaming down her cheeks. I made a terrible mistake. I was lonely and... Save it, I interrupted her, returning to my pack. I don't want to hear your excuses. As I moved around the room, gathering my belongings, memories flooded. Our first date, the day I proposed, and our wedding day, all tainted by her betrayal. Each item I packed felt like a nail in the coffin of our marriage. Alice's desperate attempts to apologize continued, and her words became a cacophony of regret and desperation. But I was unmoved, my heart hardening with each passing moment. 
I paused at our dresser, my gaze falling on a framed photo of us from our honeymoon. We looked beaming and in love. How could she throw everything away? Anger overcame me, and I slammed the frame face down. Donald, please, Alice sobbed. I love you. We can work through this. I turned to look at her, my voice low and cold. Love? You're not sure what the word means. You wouldn't have spread your legs for Daniel if you loved me. She recoiled as if I'd slapped her, but I felt no remorse. The pain of her betrayal was too intense, too overwhelming. As I zipped up my bag, I looked around the room we'd shared for years. The bed where we'd made love hundreds of times. The window seat where we'd watched sunsets together. Everything feels tainted now. I brushed past Alice and headed for the front door. She trailed behind me, pleading and apologizing, but her words went unheard. At the threshold, I paused with my hand on the doorknob. For a brief moment, I recalled our enjoyable times in this house, the laughter, the love, and the dreams we'd created together. But then the image of that dark-skinned baby appeared and any remaining softness vanished. Goodbye, Alice, I said, my voice free of emotion. One night after a challenging mission, I sat alone in my quarters holding Alice's most recent letter. As I read her words of longing and regret, a familiar anger rose within me. But something else was beneath it, a deep-seated bitterness I hadn't fully recognized. I realized then that I did not want reconciliation. The thought of Alice suffering and dealing with the consequences of her actions gave me grim satisfaction. I knew my actions were wrong, but I couldn't stop myself. The bitterness had taken root and I found myself accepting it. Months passed into a year, and I concentrated on rebuilding my life. The bitterness never disappeared, but I learned to live with it and use it as a reminder of my lessons. Trust was fragile and love was not always sufficient. I moved on, not by meeting someone new, but by discovering myself again. The betrayal reshaped me, but it did not define me. I was more robust, resilient, and determined to live independently. If you enjoyed this story and want to hear more, please subscribe and click the bell icon to keep up with my latest videos. Please like, share, and comment below. Thank you for following and supporting my channel.